Hey, how's it going YouTube? Raj here. I hope you guys are doing well. Today I'm going to be doing uh, something a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you all the samples and decans that I have that are ready to go for me for spring and summer. I've been wearing these a few of these already and some of these I've actually spoken about already. But I feel that these samples, all these fragrances I have are appropriate, most of them anyway, for the upcoming weeks, upcoming months. And uh, I want to add um, a spectacular spring, summer based fragrance. Uh, to my collection to make it a little bit more complete hopefully some of these are in here um, let's just get straight into it, that's my collection in the background by the way and uh, top shelf over here but that's another video so let's kick things off from let's go from left to right uh, this is from Guerlain uh, a scary looking guy with green eyes but this is Guerlain on and uh, this is kind of a kind of fresh fragrance, quite on the aromatic side. Oh, there's a description here. It says, um, "Oh yeah, aromatic floral note, uh, natural substance of untamed and noble woods." Yeah, well, looking forward to wearing that. I've got about five of those samples actually, so it should be good. Uh, a fragrance I've mentioned before actually. This is uh, Eau de Cartier from the House of uh, Cartier, um, Essence d'Orange, Citrus Orange. It reminds me of the drink Pims. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if any of you know what that is, but yeah, good scent, good scent for sure. Looking forward to just basically just finishing off my sample. A couple of fragrances from, oops, uh, this is from Angela Flanders. This is a British based uh, lady. Some of you guys may not be aware of her, you know, fair enough, she's not that well known. But this one is Mandarin and Mint. Um, I didn't get great longevity out of that one, but again, you know, I need to explore these more. You've got to give fragrances a chance. This one I actually liked a lot. This is called Bois de Seville. So I got these set fragrances samples from her website, and this is kind of like a, almost a spicy, very sweet wood note with the uplifting orange note. Quite interesting, actually. I, do, I might maybe wear that next week. Um, I have spoken about this on my channel, I believe. Yeah. So this is from Serge Luton, and this is called Low Froid. Um, and this one over here is simply just called Low. Uh, so these are basically a departure from um, the usual style of Serge Luton. He's trying to do something a little bit different in a new direction. And I think you know that's that's a good idea. Over here, Penhaligans. This is en Endymion, I think it's pronounced. There you go. And the sample comes like that. Uh, if I can just get it out, the sample comes like that. Um, I think from what I'm from memory, I think this is a lavender based scent. I need to go back to it. A couple of fragrances over here which I've spoken about before on my channel quite recently actually. This is from Zerzhov. This is Uden. Uden. Um, there you go, Zerzhov. And the next one is uh, Modok. Uh, Modok is basically like an iris and vetiver. Uden is kind of like a sweet, almost boozy, nutty type uh, fragrance. Good, good fragrances in the Shooting Stars collection. Um, watch my video if you want to really know a bit more detail. Um, so this I've had this for a while and I've worn it a couple of times. I do like it. This is from Lanvin. This is Vetiver. Um, thanks to the guy who sent this to me. I don't know if it's still in production though because I've never seen it, but I do like it. And um, well, since we're talking about a Vetiver, I guess I'll move on to this one over here. And this is from Check and Speak. Whoops. This is turning into a disaster. <laughs> anyway, guys, this is from uh, this is from Check and Speak. This is one of their latest, I think, the latest fragrance it's called Vetiver Vert. Uh, there you go, Check and Speak. Very nice, kind of clean, soapy um, Vetiver. Good, good for sure. Good fragrance. Um, a couple here from the. Uh, this is a place in London called Les Santeurs, and they give out free samples actually, which is always a great thing. And this is Caron uh, Le Troisième Homme. Uh, the 13th man and uh, guys I'm not going to go into uh, too much detail on these fragrances I'll, I'll be here all day otherwise if I did but uh, yeah anyway this is from Healy and this is oranges and lemons so the bells of St. Clements probably the longest name uh, ever but it's a very simple fragrance and Healy does that a lot he, he's quite stripped back um, and you've got to sort of respect that that's his style that and he does it well I just don't know if it's for me any of his fragrances I'm talking about not really my style I'm not sure Going on to, um, this is Creed now, so I've got quite a few stuff from Creed actually. So this is Creed's Tabarum Millicene. Creed's interpretation of a tobacco, uh, cinnamony almost, uh, the kind of usual 
uh, synthetic um, molecule note in there which Creed do. I don't really know what it is, and it's synthetic in a bad way, if I'm honest. There's something about some of the Creed fragrances that kind of just turn me off. But um, not this one. This one is uh, Creed's Virgin Island Water. You know, so much has been said about this fragrance, but it's good for sure. Good. This is Jardin de Malfi. Jardin de Malfi. Um, you know, it's good, but when you look at the price, I just... I don't, I don't know. You can get a decant if you want to, but I don't know if it's for me. The next three, uh, this is Himalaya. Uh, the one that I just uh, knocked over is uh, Silver Mountain Water, and that one over there is Erolfa. Um, Erolfa, I, I really don't like it, if I'm honest, guys. I know I've, I have i don't want to waste samples. I could give them away, but I want to test them properly before I have a f proper um, sort of opinion. But it reminds me of Millicene Imperial, which, if you've seen my review of that, and I didn't like that fragrance, and, yeah, it's kind of really dull to me, if I'm honest. Himalaya and Silver Mountain Water, I actually do like, so I'm looking forward to wearing those those two the most. Um, these four are from Frappin. So, a lot of people talk about, like, you know, Frapp, um, 1270 and Luministe, but a couple of others, like this one, Terre de Samon. And um, this is one of their most recent releases, Speakeasy. They don't really get spoken about too much. Um, continuing down this kind of almost boozy accord that Frappin do well, and uh, this one is not actually on the boozy side, but this is Caravel Epice. Caravel Epice. Apologies for the cameras, guys. I'm not sure if this is picking it up, but um, I'm sure you'll get. And if you have a question, like you know, what was the name of the fragrance after you know six minutes, I'll let you know. Of course, and this is um, probably spoken about quite a lot. This definitely is Frappin's Luministe. People talk about GNT and all that, you know, GNT Accord. Uh, definitely good for the summer, quite uplifting. It doesn't last on my skin, though, that's the issue. And four here from the house of Atelier Cologne. This is. You won't be able to see it, and I can't even see it myself. Uh, this is Orange Songin. Orange Songin. Um, orange juice in a bottle. Do you want to smell like that? Well, I'm not sure it's the best kind of sense. It's almost too literal and quite sharp and screechy in the opening, but it does settle down nicely into a very juicy orange scent and nothing else, to be honest. Um, quite simple, you know, if you, that's your style, then you'll love it. This one, this one is Vetiver Fertile, Grand Neroli over there, and Trefle Pur. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not really sure. So yeah, kind of uplifting, kind of citrus-based fragrances, or floral fresh fragrances, that Atelier do. And um, I haven't really found anything from Atelier that I really want to buy. But this is the whole point of this, you know. Some of the, I already know that there's a lot of fragrances in here that I probably won't end up buying, but it's all about testing for me, you know. Three from the house of Roger Dove, well not Roger Dove, um, he's the perfumer and the name of the brand is Roger Parfum. This is actually my favourite and I'm glad I got this in the largest size, so this is Neroli Extra. I'm a huge Neroli fan and I'm so glad I got my hands on this, thanks to the guy who sold this to me. Um, just a beautiful Neroli note, it really is. It's kind of fresh, uplifting, it's thick at the same time and sweet. I just wish it was supported by other notes to make the fragrance a little bit more rounded overall. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it is a good scent for sure. Um, I've also got uh, Bergamot down there and uh, a Vetiver Extra down there as well, which is pretty good. All quite simple and um, maybe too simple. But I've um, got to test them a little bit more. Got to test them a little bit more. Couple here from the house of Byredo. Nothing I've tried really from Byredo apart from Black Saffron has really piqued my interest. These uh, three actually I knocked one over earlier, but I've got um, Blanche, I've got Balda Freak, and I've got Mr. Marvelous from, from memory. Mr. Marvelous down there. Looking forward to trying those a little bit, little bit more. A couple from the house of uh, Frederick Mile. This is his most latest addition. This is Dries van Noten par Frederick Mile. Sweet, gourmandish almost, creamy, spicy, sandalwood. It's very, it's done very well. Um, looking forward to test it a little bit more. I, I can't sort of say whether I, I love it or, or hate it. I don't hate it, but I don't know if I love it, that's for sure. It's good though, can't deny it. This one is um, French Lover, also known as Bois d'Orage in other parts of the world. Uh, kind of wet, leafy, earthy vetiver. 
Um, maybe not how I like my vetivers, to be honest, or that's how I've come to realise that's what I, uh, I prefer other styles. Um, but it's worth checking out, you know, that's the whole point about fragrances, you just got to check out sample, 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 uh, you know, that's the way forward, to be honest. So this one is, uh, these two are from Tom Ford. Now I've spoken about this, this is Cafe Rose. So I've spoken about this before, so I won't say anything on that. I just have a feeling, I just have a feeling it could work on spring evenings. So I'm, I've kept the hold and held on to that decant. And the next one over here is Azura Lime. Azura Lime, just need to transfer that to an atomizer actually. But um, I like the opening. It's a nice zesty lime note, really done well. Um, it then turns into a fragrance that um, I didn't like, and it reminds me a little, in some ways, to Keton Man, and I wasn't keen on that, this kind of floral, musky style base. Um, I've got to test it a little bit more, got to be fair to these fragrances. Two from the house of Armani Privé, Orange Alhambra, or o Orange, or is it Orange Alhambra, spicy orange fragrance, and this one, yeah, this is my style of vetiver, I think, vetiver Babylon. Um, yeah, I've got to test this a little bit more, but this could be, it could be my favourite from Armani Privé. But uh, obviously, I need to wear it a little bit more. A fragrance that I have worn actually a lot is the next one over here. Apologies if the camera's moving, guys. I'm just, yeah, okay. So this is Bergamot 22. I love this actually when I wore it the other day. Uh, my sample's almost finished. A kind of fresh... Uh, bergamot juicy with an almost cucumbery type base. Um, that's what I get anyway. This one I haven't hardly worn at all, so I won't say anything about it. This is Iris 39. Okay, so a couple here from Maison Francis Curjean. Uh, that is Aqua Vitae, and this one is um, Amaris, Amaris Porom. Amaris, I think that's how you say it. Um, just. Well, just terrible. <laughs> just terrible, honestly. I, I cannot believe that a perfumer with that type of experience, um, with uh, this price tag they're charging, um, is putting out something that smells like those two. They're just... They're not bad. You know, in, when I say terrible, I put it into a context that this is a, a supposed to be a higher-end uh, fragrance brand. It's a higher price point which is probably the most important thing and the most annoying thing for me because this just smells like a Chanel fragrance a, a fragrance that Chanel could come out with both of these and uh, kind of disappointing I will wear them fully to kind of get a you know so I can review them and give a kind of um, a good detailed review but I think they're poor if I'm honest like disappointing a couple here from the house of Lubin this is Itasca oh no this is Bluff this is Bluff and the one next to it is Itasca. Uh, okay. This one is from Hubijon. This is Fougère Royale. One of the first Fougère fragrances um, on the market. I think the first. That's what I've heard anyway. This is, well, you know what? I'm not 100% sure whether this is suitable for spring and summer, but I just got a sneaky feeling it could be all right spring evenings. This is Herod from Parfum de Mali. I kind of get a vibe of Tonka Imperial from that, and I uh, haven't heard anybody else say that, but, um, or kind of really, yeah, I haven't heard anyone say that, but uh, many people say it smells similar to Tobacco Vanille, which I don't get at all. You know, that's fragrances for you. Uh, this one is from, uh, I don't know if Rene, if you're watching this video, but you sent me this, uh, so thanks for sending me this. I still haven't worn it though, I, you know, that's how I am with samples, it takes them to take me a long time. This is Eau de New York, uh, kind of Neroli fresh fragrance from Bond number no. 9. These, this one and also this one is from Hermes, and this is Vetiver Tonka, kind of like a nutty, um, kind of earthy vetiver, quite, quite sweet. I don't know if it's like... I still think Ombre Narguilé, to be honest, is my favourite from from uh, that from the MSONS line. Uh, this one is... Um, whoa. There's no label. What the hell? <laughs> I don't know what the hell this is. There's no label. Um, I don't know. Well, yeah, well, I'll find out later. Uh, this is uh, Bergamotto Merino. So thanks to Greg, actually, for sending this to me. I, I mentioned that I couldn't find this fragrance anywhere. I wanted to try it. So he, he kindly sent me a decant of that. I do like it. It is a good scent, for sure. I th I think it's really good for the price. I think that's the best way of describing it. Parfum de Ma uh, no, Parfum de Nicolai. 
and this is from New York. Uh, this is, is New York, called New York. Uh, kind of like a very uh, kind of upscale, gentlemanly scent, um, kind of aromatic, spicy for sure. I need to go back to that to be honest. This is from pa um, Parfum MDCI. This is Invasion Barbar. Um, I don't know if it's my style again. It's just um, something about that, but I just find a little bit off putting. Again, I need to test it a little bit more. I'm sure you're sensing a theme here, guys. This is from Masaki Matsushima. Like the weirdest name I've ever come across. This is M colon zero degrees Celsius. Yeah, exactly. So that is like a kind of fresh, uh, kind of um, icy. I kind of get this icy f type feeling. I know ice, well, ice actually has a scent, but I kind of get that feeling with it. It's quite an interesting house, actually. Worth checking out. Latazan Parfumeurs, Premier Figuier Extreme, a kind of more woodier, um, leafy type version of the original. Uh, these two, I won't pick them out, I can't quite reach into here, but this is uh, Comme des Garçons Red Palisander and Guerlain's Heritage. Um, Red Palisander, I haven't worn that, but Guerlain Heritage, I think again, it's a more kind of upscale event uh, in the evening type wear. Um, very nice. I get a coffee note out of that recently when I wore it a couple of weeks ago. Could be wrong, but I need to go back to it. So this is from Profum and Roma. This is Aquaviva, one of the most realistic uh, lemon notes that I've ever come across with a nice kind of clean um, cedar woody base. I don't know what I'm paying for, to be honest, when I look at the price, but it is good. Oh, so another Healy. This is uh, Sel Moran. Not my style, guys. I'm not a fan of uh, aquatics. The whole genre, I think, just sucks, to be honest. But it's just my taste, you know. It's just personal opinion. There's nothing in there that I find interesting. But I will wear it till the end, and I will talk about it in another video. This is from Fédon. Vervin, 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 Figuier. Uh, kind of, again, another fig-based fragrance with a kind of green, leafy um, edge to it. This is from Jo Malone. This is Pomegranate Noir. One of the more darker, darker style fragrances from Jo Malone. Um, not really, she's not really known for that. And uh, this is from Prada. This is Luna Rosa. Nice lavender notes. I do like this fragrance actually. I do quite, a lot. I do, do, do quite like it. Um, I can't see myself buying a bottle, but you know, I got given the sample for free, and I definitely will wear it. Um, so I thought I was from from Luna Rossa. I thought I was going to get like a marine vibe, but I don't. But I do from this. This is Cell de Vetiver from the different company. Uh, kind of like nice salt note in the top with a quite very dry vetiver fragrance. Turns out this is actually a very simple fragrance on my skin anyway. Good stuff though. Santa Maria Novella. This is Zagara, orange blossom. Uh, I'm just gonna just go through these really quickly. So I've got one from Parfumerie Générale, Hyper Essence or Hyper Essence Matal over here. Uh, Kerosene's Whips and Roses. I'm actually really looking forward to wearing that. I do like the kind of fresh and almost dark at the same time um, rose notes. That one, that one is from uh, Divine, some Loam Sage. Uh, over here, uh, this is quite an interesting one actually. I kind of guess I'll pick this one out. This is from Rania J. I don't know if you can see that there, Rania J. This is Lavande 44. Lavande 44, um, le uh, lavender based fragrance with a kind of almost dark uh, base in there. I'm actually quite looking forward to wearing that a little bit more. Then uh, from Carna Barcelona, Tardes, and finally, guys, from the house of Mark Buxton. You won't be able to pick this up, the camera's not picking up, but this is called, this is called English Breakfast. Um, I don't know if I want to smell like um, bacon, eggs, and mushrooms, but uh, it, thankfully it doesn't smell like that. It actually is more on the uplifting side, but uh, as you can see, I've hardly touched this thing. I've just basically tested it once on the top of my hand. Anyway, so there you go, guys. Quite a lot of stuff to, for me to go through. I don't know if I'll get all through all of these in the next coming months. Let me know, what have you been wearing for spring and summer? Um, anything in here that you've tried that you like or dislike? And uh, yeah, you know, thanks for the interaction. It's always great interacting with you guys. Thanks for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, take care. Bye.